Hi guys, welcome to my channel. On today's episode, we'll be discussing the UK visa application process. Now, before I proceed, please kindly subscribe to my channel, click on the notification icon so that every time I make a new video, you'll be the first to catch it. Now, this is going to be a long video. So, I'll be telling you everything. I mean, those things travel agents don't want you to know. And on today's episode, it's just going to be, it's going to be a long one. The United Kingdom is made up of four different countries. England, Scotland, Wales, and the Northern Ireland. So now, now that you know um, the different countries that make up the UK or the United Kingdom, so now the question is, the next question is, what is your purpose of visiting? Like you, your, your main reason for visiting? And most of you say Jackpot, <laughs> which means basically you're going for a location. But um, for some people, it could be um, tra you just want to like visit your relative. For some people, it's just um, tourists. For some people, it could be educational purpose. Or why some people, for some people, it could just be um, you're planning to, you know, relocate, relocate. So now getting the visa can sometimes be hard, and that's because people don't have the right information. So, but people with the right information and the, they have everything it takes. I mean, getting a UK visa is almost like a walkover. So now, what do you need to get started? Now, the first thing is there are basic requirements and there are like additional requirements that you need whenever you're applying for the UK visa. So now the basic requirements are the basic things you need whenever you're applying for a visa. Things like um, your passport, I mean your international passport. So there are standard requirements which are like the basic requirements whenever you're applying for the UK visa. Now these are the basic requirements. Number one, proof of fund. Number two, leave approval letter. Number three, your tax certificate just to prove that you're paying tax. Number four, your pay slip. Number five, Employment letter, number six, CAC registration, so to show that your business is registered. Number seven, introduction letter, number eight. You could also add additional documents like your, um, your proof of payment for rent or like, yeah, your receipt for rent, um, your financial details. You also need like your six month statement. This is to prove that you have the funds that is necessary to travel to this country for example if, if you're planning to if you're going to study you need like a sponsor letter now for most people you might be wondering like i've tried most of these things and i've been denied over and over now these are the reasons why you could be denied number one no evidence of income so which means you come to justify your earning so number two no evidence of ties now when people, when people talk about ties people really get confused now they are um when the consular is reviewing your application they're looking at basic things like if, if we give you this visa would you come back now you need to prove to them that you have more to lose if you don't come back you need to prove to the consular that you are coming back so for example um things like oh my parents are here my family members are here my business is here so definitely or i have a well-paying job that i would not want to lose you know going to another country so now these are some of the basic ties that you, you should be able to prove so, for example, um, if you write, if you, if you get a letter of introduction from your employer, so they, what they mean, they already know that you have a tie to that particular company. So, which means, if you're leaving, you're coming back for to a job. You should be able to prove to them that you're definitely coming back. Now, number three, incorrect information. Now, people often do this just because you're trying to, you know, you're desperate to get this visa. You kind of lie in your application. This would sometimes go against you once they detect this they will definitely reject your application now number four fake documents now this is what you should never do because um once you're caught they might ban you for years so which means never ever present fake documents whenever you're applying to the uk now number five this is common mistakes so which means um if you just avoid mistake whenever you're applying for the uk visa and this is because so for example if you made a mistake in your name um where you, are, where you live you made a mistake like several mistakes sometimes they might uh, uh, overlook some probably minor mistakes but if you make a lot of mistake in your application they'll definitely they might reject your application now still regarding ties now there are different ways to prove your ties it could be relationship it could be family it could be true property business job it could be it, it could even be true school so for example if you say oh i'm currently in uni like 400 level so why would i want to jack bar <laughs> and lose four years of my life so those are some of the things you need to prove to show that you're definitely coming back to your country now for some people might wonder like what about if i'm 
really going for relocation now this has been a big issue in the in the past in the sense that many people just travel and people just feel oh they are relocating now there are different kinds of visa like i said initially like, so now um so there's the um, student visa there's the visit visa there's the work permit and there's the what else and there's the tourist visa so now if you are for most for most most of us you either be getting a visit or a tourist visa and that's because um you, have, you probably have someone over there you're just going for tourism purpose the last one which is if you're going there to work so now for most people that are looking for job or, or um, work permit the only way to get that is if you actually get a job maybe from here then you can actually get a work permit your co the company you, um, that employs you will probably process it from the, for you if you don't have a job offer in the uk and you just want to get a work visa that is almost impossible because um you need to actually get employment first before you can start processing your work visa so i hope you guys get got that right so now um some of the other things you need to understand whenever you are you know, applying for the UK visa is number one, make sure you meet the basic requirements. Now, and most people also get confused when, when we're talking about this proof of fund, like six month statement. What it means is this I'll just put it down, I'll break it down in the simplest form. If you're traveling to the UK and you probably earn like 100,000 a month, so what, what that means is, um, out of this 100,000, probably your expenses every other month is 20,000. And you save like 80,000. And let's say you've been saving this 80,000 consistently for six months. Six times 80,000. And let's assume um, you also have some money in your account before then. Let's assume you have, you have like 500,000. So six times 80, that's 480. So 500,000 plus 480, you have like about 980,000 in your account. And let's assume again that um, the cost for the cost of traveling to the UK is around everything is just around five hundred thousand. So what that means is, after expending these travel expenses, you still have like four hundred thousand, four hundred eighty thousand naira to play with. So to a consular that makes sense. But on the other hand, like you only have about let's say you you're earning like hundred thousand a month and your expenses is like eighty thousand. So which means your what you have remaining every other month is twenty thousand, and miraculously you have like two million in your account. But record shows that you only save twenty twenty thousand every month. So a counselor like, believes like how did two million get into your account? So it's just common sense. So what that means is this: you have to prove to the counselor that okay, every other month money is coming into my account. So after expenditure, I still have like few a reasonable amount of money in that same account. So for example, another example is this. If you're a family man, you're a family of like four, and your basic salary is like one million per month, and um, your cost of, for traveling to the UK is roughly about four million, you have like 10 million in your account. What that means is this. To the consular, you still have like six million at the end, at the end of your expenditure. That still makes sense, but not the case whereby a family of four, you're earning 200,000 naira, and you, you're planning to go to the UK. And probably your expenses is like 160,000. Basically, you only save 40,000 naira every other month. So the consular is looking like, how will you be able to sponsor that trip to the UK? So definitely, if you're doing that, you're probably just planning to go and never come back. So these are some of the things that look. So which means if you are planning your application, you have to make sure every other month, your financial statement shows that you have everything it takes. To go for that particular trip and still come back with enough money in your account basically that is just the easiest way to explain that and also for some people think you just have to be like dropping a particular sum of money every other month so you have to prove that you can, you're actually earning this money legitimately so but the best way to do this is every other month make sure your um you have like a steady amount coming into your account probably through your business or through salary it should, it should show that you have a legitimate source of income and your income is enough to sponsor the, your trip another mistake most people make is this after submitting your application you take out the money always ensure you get your visa before touching that money 
just to be able to prove to the because uh, most people feel oh once i submit the application i can easily start taking off the money so ensure that you have that money consistently in that account and also some people do this um you've saved money for six months or sorry you've saved money for three months in the space of that three months you withdraw the old money and you start again thinking oh i've been it will still reflect that i've been saving for six months if you start from the fourth month it might not really work in the sense that you need to make sure you have a consistent flow of income for that six month period that way you have you stand the chance of being you know granted the visa so basically that's everything you need to know about the uk visa if you have any question please drop it in the comment below i'll be willing i'll be more than happy to respond to all your questions and please be here to subscribe please click on that subscription button also click on the notification icon so that every time i make a new post you won't miss it and i'll be sharing more tips and updates on different kinds of visa in future posts see you next time bye